Hi guys, this is going to be the tutorial that's going to show you how to do the waddle stitch. And this looks beautiful in variegated color and also solid color. Really has a lot of texture and it's super simple, so uh, it's perfect for a beginner crocheter. I have my daughter, who's eight years old, in mind when I was messing around with this stitch and I thought you know this would be a great beginner afghan for her because it's very warm and you can do it and it looks great in multi uh, variegated colors and in solid colors. So for this project you're going to need a five millimeter hook and I used worst weight yarn which is four ply for the US, ten ply for Australia. As with any stitch you can use any size yarn and just you know use the recommended hook size with that yarn. But as most of us start with worst weight yarn and five millimeter hook at least I did so that's what I'm going to show you in this one so the multiples of this stitch is three and what that means is that you're going to be chaining on uh, sets of three so chain three chain three chain three until you get the desired width that you're after so to begin go ahead and chain in your sets of three, your multiples of three, and we'll get started. Okay, once you have your chain completed, what you're going to do is you're going to skip the first two chains. So count one, two, those two you're gonna skip, and then this third chain from the hook, you're gonna put a single crochet, chain one, double crochet, all work in the same chain. So I'm gonna go into that chain, and I'm going to do my single crochet. Chain one, then yarn over for your double crochet. Find that same stitch and go into that chain. And then finish your double crochet. Then you're going to be skipping two stitches. So count one, two, and again in the next chain, you're going to be working another single crochet chain one and then double crochet all worked in that same stitch and you're going to keep repeating that down your row you're going to skip two one two and in this third chain here you're going to do a single crochet chain one and then a double crochet in the same stitch so keep continuing down the row Again, skip two, and then in the next, you'll do your single crochet, chain one, double crochet, all worked in the same chain. So continue down, and I'll show you how to end your row. Okay, here I am at the end of my row, and if you've done it correctly, you should have three chains left at the end of your row. And again, you're gonna skip two chains, and then this very last chain, you're gonna work your single crochet, your chain one, and then your double crochet. And that will end your row one. Okay, for row two, you wanna chain one and turn. Now, when we were doing our single crochet, chain one, then double crochet, that chain one left a space in between your single crochet and double crochet. These are the spaces we're gonna use this round, this row, sorry. So they should be pretty easy to spot. So in this very first space here, in between your first single crochet, double crochet, we're gonna be working a single crochet, chain one, double crochet worked in that space. So I'm gonna go into that space pull up a loop, do my single crochet, then chain one, and then work my double crochet. And then you're gonna move over. You can see there's a single crochet here and a double crochet here. The single crochet was the part that uh, was part of the first set. So you have your single crochet, double crochet here, and then you'll have a double crochet, single crochet here. And in between there's the chain. So again, in between this little V, we're going to be putting 
our next set of single crochet, chain one, double crochet. And then move on over, find your next V, and in that space, you're going to be working your single crochet, chain one, and double crochet. And you will continue to do this all the way down your row, and then I will show you how to finish your row. Okay, for row two, you want to chain one and turn. Now, when we were doing our single crochet, chain one, then double crochet, that chain one left a space in between your single crochet and double crochet. These are the spaces we're going to use this round, this row, sorry. So they should be pretty easy to spot. So in this very first space here, in between your first single crochet, double crochet, we're going to be working a single crochet, chain one, double crochet worked in that space. So I'm going to go into that space, pull up a loop, do my single crochet, then chain one, and then work my double crochet. And then you're going to move over. You can see there's a single crochet here and a double crochet here. The single crochet was the part that uh, was part of the first set. So you have your single crochet, double crochet here, and then you'll have a double crochet, single crochet here. And in between there's the chain. So again, in between this little V, we're going to be putting our next set of single crochet, chain one, double crochet. And then move on over, find your next V, and in that space, you're going to be working your single crochet, chain one, and double crochet. And you will continue to do this all the way down your row, and then I will show you how to finish your row. Get to the very end of the row, you've done your last set of single crochet, chain one, double crochet. You have your last stitch of your row. If you marked it with a piece of string or a marker, you should be able to find it really easily. Every row you'll be ending with single crocheting in that last single crochet. And if you realize that the chain here is kind of uh, smaller than the rest of your project, next time uh, I recommend that you go up one hook size bigger. So if you're using a five millimeter hook to do most of the crochet, just for the chain, you can go up to a uh, six millimeter hook. And this is size H, and I believe uh, this is a size J, size uh, six millimeter hook is a size J. So every time you get to the end of the row, you're always going to be chaining one and turning and then begin the row just like you did last time. You'll just be repeating the row two over and over and over again. And that's it. If you're watching Lily, I want to encourage you to keep on going, doing your Afghan. I bet it's looking beautiful. You're doing a great job. And everyone else is watching. I encourage you the same way. And if you're wondering what kind of hook that I'm using, this is a, a wooden furls hook. You can find the link down below this video. I recommend that you order it with the extended hook. And if you have a lot of problems with uh, your hands cramping and whatnot, this is definitely the hook to get because you don't have to squeeze so tight like this. You have a little bit of room here. And get it in wood if you can because it's very light and doesn't put much strain on your hand. Uh, I also have a Facebook group called Crochet for the Masses. That is, the link is also down below this video. We'd really love to see the crochet projects that you're making or share links to free patterns, uh, patterns that you think is cool and everything. So go ahead and do that uh, and say hello to us over there on Crochet for the Masses. So that's it, guys. Thank you so very much for watching.